to work through three proofs here. We see this first one. ABCD is a parallelogram, and segment FE is parallel to segment DC. So with every proof, we start with our givens. And see where they lead us. Now I'm the type that I like to start with my givens first and see what they tell me. And then go to the diagram. Sometimes you kind of use them in tandem, which is what we're going to do here. A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. So let's look at that parallelogram a little more closely. A, B, C, D. Now with this parallelogram, there are multiple things I know. I know its opposite sides are parallel, its opposite sides are congruent, its opposite angles are congruent, etc. So I want to determine which of those might be useful in this case. Which of those many properties, definition, theorem, etc. Looking at the second given, that segment FE is parallel to segment DC, tells me that I want to look at parallelism. So in that red parallelogram, I know that both pair of opposite sides are parallel. I know that segment AB along the bottom must be parallel to segment DC across the top. And remember, I'm looking at that red parallelogram. And I also know that segment AD on the left is parallel to segment BC on the right. And that's by the definition of a parallelogram. Two pair of parallel sides. One thing to keep in mind here. Since we've already shown that segment AD is parallel to segment BC. It is naturally understood that segment AF, which is part of segment AD, is also parallel to segment BE because it is part of segment BC. So in the parallelogram we're trying to prove ABEF. Remember we're trying to prove that ABEF is a parallelogram. So in this green quadrilateral I already know that the left side and the right side are parallel. That's stated and understood as part of what I just wrote in statement number two. So the question becomes, how can I show that the top segment FE and the bottom segment AB in that green parallel or in that green quadrilateral, how can I show that those two are parallel? So I want to show that segment FE, which I see here in number one, and segment AB, I see there in number two, I want to show those two are parallel. Now looking at what I see in step one and what I see in step two, I can see that both of those segments are parallel to segment DC, which means they must be parallel to each other. So segment FE is parallel to segment AB. If two lines are parallel, to the same line then they are parallel. To each other. It's at this point that we've now shown that both pair of sides, both pair of opposite sides, in this quadrilateral, the one I outlined in green, are parallel. Which means that green quadrilateral ABEF must be a parallelogram. Based on the definition of a parallelogram, it has two pair of opposite sides that are parallel. which completes this first proof. Now there are other ways that this proof could have been accomplished. This is just one of the shorter, more direct approaches based on that second given being our heads up to say, hey, I'm doing something with parallel in this problem. As we look at our second proof, see an entirely different situation. Here we're given some congruent triangles. We have to prove that ACEG 
is a parallelogram. So we start with triangle BCD being congruent to triangle FGH and triangle DEF being congruent to triangle HAB. Let's look at that first pair of congruent triangles to begin with. Triangle BCD and triangle HGF, FGH. Okay, we're trying to prove something about ACEG, not the little interior quadrilateral, the larger one that surrounds it. So I want to see what parts of these triangles are also parts of this larger parallelogram ACEG. And I can see in this case that the triangles and that large parallelogram, they don't share an entire side. None of their sides are the same lengths. So in that case, using sides is probably not going to be a good option. So we look at their angles instead. I can see in triangle BCD that angle C is also an angle of ACEG. And likewise, this angle down here at G that corresponds to angle C in those congruent triangles, we know it's corresponding because they are both the second letter in each name, that those corresponding parts must be congruent to one another in this particular quadrilateral ACEG. So for part two, I'm going to use angle C is congruent to angle G, and that's by CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Now let's look at that second pair of congruent triangles. Triangle DEF, down here, and we're going to outline these in green, is congruent to triangle HAB. And there again, we can see that the green triangles and the larger parallelogram, they don't share any full side lengths, so we're not going to use their sides. And you should see the same type of relationship appearing here where this angle at A in triangle HAB corresponds to this angle down here at E in triangle DEF. And there again, we know they're corresponding because they both happen to be the middle letter in each of those two congruent triangles. So in this case, that same CPCTC allows us to state that angle A must be congruent to angle E. Now, if we look closely at parallelogram or that quadrilateral ACEG, we can see that we now have two pair of opposite angles that are congruent. Angle C and angle G is one pair. Angle A and angle E a second pair. So because both pair of opposite angles are congruent, we can state that ACEG is a parallelogram. And our reason? The opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. And that concludes the second proof. So that one's much shorter, even though the information may have made it look more complex. And then we have this last one. In this case, we're given another pair of congruent triangles, entirely different looking diagram. And we're asked to prove that LMNO is a parallelogram. Now, in this case, there are a couple of different ways that you can approach the problem. Um, you could use, maybe you're going to use corresponding parts again, but maybe you'll use sides. Maybe you'll use angles. Or maybe you'll use a combination of the two. And that's the route that I'm going to take here. You can find other examples out on the internet of where they're going to use just the sides, but I want to show you how that sixth method for proving that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram can be used. So like I said, there are other ways that this proof could be done. I'm just going to show you one way. Okay, so we have two congruent triangles and we're trying to determine which parts of those congruent triangles are going to be useful in proving that this is a parallelogram. So with these two triangles, I notice a couple of things. I know that segment LM, the first two letters in this first name, is congruent segment NO. 
And I know from the same names that uh, segment LO, which would be the left side of that quadrilateral, is congruent to segment NM, which would be the right side of that quadrilateral. Now, if I were to go ahead and state that those parts were congruent by CPCTC, then I could very easily state that LMNO is a parallelogram because its opposite sides were congruent. So this particular proof would take three steps if we were to do it in that way. Instead, I'm going to state that segment LM is congruent to segment ON. And there again, it's the first two letters in each of these two congruent triangles in those names. At the same time, I want to state that angle LMO, that's up here in the upper right, is congruent to angle NOM, which is this one. So here I've stated that the top is congruent to the bottom, and I've stated these two congruent angles, both of which come from those congruent triangles and are based on the names of those congruent triangles that were given in number one. Now with that in mind, you should notice that that pair of angles that I've marked congruent are a pair of alternate interior angles. Now the alternate interior angles converse says that if two lines are cut by a transversal, transversal being the diagonal, in such a way that the alternate interior angles are congruent, then those lines must be parallel. So this pair of alternate interior angles that we have in statement number two allows us to state that segment LM is parallel to segment ON because those two angles are alternate, opposite sides of the diagonal, interior between these two lines. So in that case, the alternate interior angles converse. And remember, it's the converse anytime you state that lines are parallel. And we'll go ahead and mark that in our diagram as well. So at this point, I've shown that one pair of sides, LM and segment ON, that those two segments are parallel, and I've stated that they are congruent. The same pair of sides are both parallel and congruent. So in statement number four, we can state that LMNO is a parallelogram because one pair of opposite sides are parallel and congruent. And that completes the proof. So you've got multiple ways of approaching some of these proofs. Some of them will have one very obvious, direct answer, and some of them may give you some freedom of choice. As long as you have all of the necessary information within the proof, there's no dictate as to which route you have to take. Examine what you're given, examine the diagram, and determine a course of action.